<laughs> Welcome to Gear Talk. Talking gear. Brandon's back. I'm here. And it's sweater weather. It is. 72 degrees, Southern California, getting ready for the holidays. Yeah, we're trying to get in the holiday spirit. The whole world is celebrating Christmas and the holidays early, so we thought, let's lean in. Let's be part of the gang. Let's just like skip over a myriad of holidays that are that are still to come and just break out the ugly sweater wear, you know? So here we are. Roscoe's back. Good to see you, Roscoe. Thank you for joining us. How do we sound today? Is, is this headset working out okay? I hope we sound good. Um, it's probably not a good thing that your headset's not plugged in, Brandon. Um, mm. But not to worry. We are using the MXA310 on our table in front of us. We're going to be talking about the MXA710, the MXA910, all sorts of shirt conferencing products with our friends, Tim Valley, uh, here in office. Hey, Tim, and Chris Neiman joining us from uh, lovely Cheyenne, Wyoming. Hey, Chris. So howdy, howdy. Stick around. Howdy, howdy. On brand. <laughs> um, we're going to be talking to them in just a little bit. But, Brandon, um, episode four of Gear Talk. Talking gear, excuse me. Um, I wanted real quick, other famous episode fours in history. Okay. Um, Brandon, Star Wars, A New Hope, episode four. Which Star Wars character most speaks to your your ethos? I'm always a, uh, well, episode four. Is that the one that's... It the correct answer is Chewbacca. Chewbacca. <laughs> I got it right. That's, uh, that's the first one or one of the good ones, depending on where you fall on this debate. Let's not... Sure, sure. Yeah. Let, let's che not spark the ire of the Star Wars community. Chewbacca's a lifelong hero, though. He's, he's always got just the right word at just the right moment. A episode four, though. We are excited. We've got two episodes after this remaining in season one of Gear Talk. Talking gear. Sure systems today. Two weeks. Some sure retail. Uh, and then a grand finale. Stay tuned for some details on that. Um, but we are very happy to get into it. We've actually got a ton of news and updates. It has been an incredibly busy, sure year. Uh, we picked a fun year, to put it in a certain kind of way, <laughs> to release a bunch of exciting new products. Um, Brandon, we're talking a lot about Microflex Advanced today. Uh, that's not the only time we use that term, Microflex. We've got uh, Microflex Original, yeah, Classic. We're calling it MXOG so that we can keep that uh that original product sort of in one category and that's we, your your mx 412s your gooseneck mics that you see on podiums your button mics you know anything micro flex that you've used in any of these corporate environments for the last handful of years is what we're going to be calling mxog 2013 we introduced microflex wireless uh deck band wireless yeah. boundary microphone gooseneck microphone handheld body pack we're going to be talking a little bit more about some updates with mxw 2016 MXA. We had 310 and 910 get released, uh, which was a, a big splash, obviously, for tables and ceilings all over the globe. It sort of changed what the modern conference room looks like uh, across all manufacturers. 2017 Microflex Complete, Microflex Complete Wireless. Uh, somewhat self-explanatory on the differences sure. there. Yeah, our, our wired system. And then the same way that we made MX into a wireless uh, version, we made a wireless version of MXC and sort of the voting components and things that might go along with that style meeting. Now we're updating, we're adding to the MXA line, the MXA 710, and we're introducing a new Microflex family, the Microflex Network Loudspeaker, the MXN 5W C for ceiling. C for ceiling, W for white. So if you're playing Microflux Bingo at home, uh, intern to the chat window if you if you got bingo there with, with, with all your different Microflux product families. We'll help you keep them straight. That's what we're here to do. Excellent. So news and updates real quick. Brandon, uh, what have you archived lately? Which is no shame. By the way, yeah. what have you archived lately is not a criticism. This isn't a guilt segment because no. we all do it. It, 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 if something comes up, it, it looks moderately important for the moment, but compared to the burning fire right next to it, you take care of the fire, and the next thing you know, you've archived, and it's, it's been tucked away. But these are some important things to our industry and to uh, us as integrators or anyone in the system channel that's trying to put together this type of corporate audio. Uh, we've got a, a new direct replacement for SLX. Uh, we have released SLX-D, which is uh, the digital sort of uh, on-ramp into our professional wireless. Um, it is the most modestly priced. It's the entry-level product. Um, so here, you, you'll probably notice it looks a little bit like a, a QLXD single-channel receiver, half-rack space. It's got the quarter-wave antennas. QLXD ships with the half-waves. We've got a body pack. We've got a handheld. 
Guys, let's take a look at the website here so you can see the whole product family. Uh, there's a dual channel receiver as well uh, to go with the other components. Um, but like we said, replacement for SLX analog, SLXD. Um, Brandon, I wanna talk about SLXD uh, in, in terms of uh, a new segment, a segment within a segment. This is the Russian doll of uh, Gear Talk segments. Uh, what the spec? Um, I think there's some understandable confusion when you're looking at 10, 11, 12 different Sure wireless series. A lot of them have D in the name, ULXD, QLXD, SLXD. They all uh, say world class. You know. they, they are all world class. Um, how do you differentiate uh, an important specification that, that you might just kind of run past when you're looking at all these different wireless systems? Certainly, obviously, cost is a big difference. But one thing that really kind of helps dictate why certain things cost more than others is tuning, tuning bandwidth. bandwidth. Yeah, you should you should really familiarize yourself with the tuning scale or the bandwidth that it's able to to put itself to where at the top of the line Axiom Digital is a pure wideband product. You can slip in and out of the spectrum wherever you need to. Over 100 more 140 megahertz of space with Axiom Digital. Right. Right, that's that options, lanes on the freeway, parking spots, um, choices you can make to avoid interference. Correct. One of the real hidden details when you're looking at a, a very, very low cost system, the the eight channel all in one karaoke extravaganza 199 system, real deep in that spec sheet is a is likely a very narrow tuning bandwidth. It's like 12 megahertz wide or eight megahertz wide. Sometimes a single channel system might even be fixed frequency or, or very, very narrow. And why that's important is our primary source of interference is still a digital TV broadcast, KCET, KNBC, KPBS. And each one of those takes up a six megahertz chunk of spectrum. So if your system can only tune into eight megahertz or 10 megahertz, and maybe you're right on top of two TV channels, yep. you're sort of always going to have a, a, a bad experience because you're always competing with a direct source of interference. It's like two really large white trucks with massive tires taking all the parking and you've got no place to put your Prius. Uh, that, that's an audio gear Kyle and Kyle joke. Uh, we're, we're the Prius <laughs> segment of the audio gear team. There is a truck segment of the audio gear team. They're running the broadcast, so we don't want to poke too much fun. Sure. Uh, so it's a nice truck, Kyle. SLXD, 34 megahertz tuning bandwidth, digital RF scheme, whereas QLXD, ULXD, 64 megahertz bandwidth. Okay. And, and SLX is going to drop below that at about half that. Yeah. You know, it, it's just the number of opportunities you have to get a channel online. As you move down in price point, the filtering sophistication moves down with it. That's one of the big ways they save cost. So when you ask us, what's the right wireless system for me? We typically ask you right back, how many channels on air do you need? And where are you? If, are, are you in LA or are you in Cheyenne, Wyoming? A beautiful place. Let, let's cut over to Chris nodding in approval for, for living in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Okay. Radio, we call it Radio Free Wyoming. <laughs> there you Any go. tour can come here and work well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so when you need... 50, 60, 70 channels on air, that is likely still a ULXD or Axiom Digital task. When you need a rock solid 12, 16, 20 channels on air, um, certainly the ULXDs of the world will do that, but you might be able to use SLXD, save a little money, buy the right system for your needs. So wanted to make sure, because that's an important wireless system, we're gonna be going now headlong into conferencing products, uh, different aspects of the Sure product portfolio, but did not want to overlook SLXD. So here in this pandemic, Sure has put a lot of time and energy into revamping their website. And there's a beautiful new website uh, that is uh, very lifestyle centric. There's a lot of great graphics and photographs of product in use and people interacting with the product. Uh, but w some of us are really struggling to find the detail that we need as designers or as integrators to get to the nuts and bolts that, that make it simple for us. So sure heard this from uh, the dealer base and created the tech portal. So it's always in the upper right hand corner. You'll see a link to get to the tech portal or when you're looking at a specific product under its accessory support, you'll see view in the tech portal. And here's a little bit of what the tech portal looks like. Um, I'm logged in. Uh, I've selected wireless systems. It's organized, you know, from most feature rich to most economical, let's say. Uh, so just a real quick, easy place to grab the 
specification, the CAD drawn, whatever you might need. And he says, uh, quick login. It's a, it's a free product. It's available to everybody. And the login is just an email to kind of keep track of who's using the site and who's not. If you are already signed up with any Sure uh, website, the Training Institute, or any of the other products that Sure offers online, mm -hmm. your login is the same. And you can just use the same one to go ahead and get in the tech portal. But for those of you that are having to pull specs and pull cut sheets and that are having to put together systems, this website's going to save you tremendous amounts of time. Brandon, let's keep talking about free software, uh, the Sure System On. So let's say you're in a facility, you've got 20 conference rooms, 100 conference rooms, everybody's got four MXW microphones, and they should be plugged into the network charging station every time the accounting team or the marketing team is done with the meeting, but maybe not always, right? right? right. And you're the technician who's got to manage all of this Didn't across the campus. Didn't quite get into the USB connection yeah. or whatever. How can I... Uh, without having to go to every room and double check, uh, have a quick at a glance look and see the health of my system. So System On is, is a, a free piece of software that's leveraging the connectivity of the network. It's got the ability to look at and ping and get basic health status from all of the Sure devices that are out there on the network. Um, it was really developed in initially for MXW because there was a lot of folks having trouble with the ability to plug in a charger, know that the room is ready You know, 15 minutes before the meeting is supposed to start. At a glance, they're able to see, is everything charged? Everything's up and operational? Or did something not get charged overnight and I need to run down there and replace a unit before the meeting starts? It's, a, it's an ability to sort of have a predictive, proactive way of taking care of your uh, AV conference spaces. And it's free. It's free. Uh, and you don't have to use the Sure software if you don't like. If you already have a third-party viewing software or you've got something that's your single pane of glass that's allowing you to monitor all of your facilities, Sure has an open API, and they're happy to send that data out to uh, a, a viewing style of your choice. Okay. One more piece of free software we want to talk about, the Sure Update Utility. The thing that updates your other things. Update your updater. Update your updater. It happened this week. Uh, so we kind of got caught by this. We were updating gear uh, in anticipation of Gear Talk. Talking gear. And uh, we noticed a couple things were out of date. And first, we had to go update our Sure Update Utility. So um, if you're curious, this is what Update Utility is going to look like. It's going to go out. It's going to find all of your Sure devices on your network. Uh, you can see uh, my AD610, my show link, managing, well, we're not using our lavaliers after all. Um, but I could say send updates and it will send it right down. Looks like we're discovering some other hardware out on the network. Uh, really, really important tool. Uh, and here, if we're getting all your Sure software, sure.com backslash software, you'll see the update utility, wireless workbench, uh, web device discovery. So just a little tip there because nothing like calling into tech support and having the factory say, what version of update utility are you on? Right. And you kind of have that moment where you're like, Oh shoot! I should. Yeah, we all we checked. all are at the point now now where you know before you call for customer service support of any kind, you know to make sure you're on the latest firmware. But if your firmware updater isn't telling you that there is newer firmware, you've got a problem. So it's just safe to go ahead and uninstall your update utility and put the new one on, and uh, it, it will give you all of these new tools that are available with these new products. Okay, let's get to hardware. Oh, uh, Microflex Complete. We referenced it earlier. We added a new delegate station. So we are discontinuing the DIS 5900 system, the, the sunset of the, of the DIS uh, hardware. And Poor now Danish. all delegate stations are under the Microflex Complete family name. This is the MXC 605. Um, wire not pictured, but, but would need to be wired uh, in and out. Make sure you've got a CCU on the network, but a very simple, easy way to get a discussion system in our, let's be honest, new socially distanced meeting environment. All right. And this allows you to basically have spaced out discussion, exactly what people need right now. Your city council that had 20, 25 people that were engaged in a room that holds 30 or 35 people is now no longer possible. So they take those same 20, 25 people to a high school gym where they can seat them far apart at tables. They now don't have the ability to hear each other acoustically. So simple system. Uh, this wired version is Basically plug and play, speaker and a microphone with the ability to push to talk. There are a few settings that you can put in there if you like, but it, it's really just designed so that you can hear one another, look at each other in the eyes as real humans as opposed to virtually, and try to have a, a you know positive utility-based meeting. And this, of course, is one of many delegate station form factors. So if we take a look here, we've got flush mount options. We've got um, delegate stations where you can vote 
We've got the touch screen. So if you want to see your agenda items go by, um, lots of I'm mean, choose your own adventure in the microflex complete world all the way up to UN style very structured meetings I have a specific amount of time my votes are recorded to my user ID to my hardware station uh, name signs that that react to what person is sitting in front of the system uh, future gear talk talking gear uh, probably coming on MXC because there's a mm -hmm. lot to talk about there um, we're going to again configure the wireless version of MXC uh, in a little bit. Um, but it's, Brent, it's, it's an endless hole. So uh, it, when you have your MXC opportunity come up, feel free to reach out to your favorite local rep and uh, have the ability to uh, get this information sort of disseminated for you because it is a huge catalog of options. Okay. One more quick update you need to know about before we get to some of the new uh, MXA mics, uh, Microflex Wireless. Uh, bit of good news. There it is. Uh, access point, network charger, different transmitter form factors. Um, you know what you love it. It is now Dante Domain Manager ready. Uh, so if you are a facility who needs uh, to apply some Dante rules of the road for who can make decisions associated with specific hardware, certain rooms, um, the MXA, the ecosystem products, and MXW are all Domain Manager ready. Also, it's going to say but. Also, also. And uh, MXW, so today, configuration, setup, monitoring of an MXW system is done uh, through a web browser control GUI that is based on Adobe Flash. And Adobe will not be supporting Flash come January 1st. Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. No, no, I think we're all looking forward to New Year's. Yeah. Um, so this is not what have you archived lately. This is coming to an inbox near you. How are we going to deal with MXW system setup? So Sure recognizes that obviously we still need to talk to our components and that Flash uh, being the basis in which they use the first time around makes it difficult. So uh, they're going to put out a small stopgap uh, application, a, a separate piece of software that's going to allow us to get into, uh, manipulate, and monitor MXW systems while it's making its full progress into Designer, where it will actually live and have full function somewhere down the road soon. Awesome. Okay. It's free. It, it, it will be free. <laughs> um, so you're hearing us talk on the MXA 310, and we're going to be talking about the brand new MXA 710 Linear Array. Now, Brandon, I've been having a hard time describing the coverage of an MXA 710. Um, can we see something we're familiar with, an MXA 910? So ceiling mount, top down. I love this because I get to describe them as spotlights you direct around a room and you can get quite surgical with your approach. Here we see eight individual seats uh, captured by the eight, nine, 10 lobes. Very good, that was hard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> surgical is the right word for it. The 910 is still the premium product. It still has the most microphone elements in it. It still has the most control. And so when you really have got to do some pinpoint uh, collection of audio, either because it's a noisy room or you'll be doing some type of voice lift or they're just quiet talkers, the, the 910 is still the, the premium solution. But as less and less ceilings are coming with two by two tiles or as less and less uh, folks are, are choosing to have that as a part of their aesthetic, the 710 has come in to fill a, a much needed gap. So let's show the MXA 310, the tabletop in its toroidal, toroidal. pattern. We did it. Uh, we were very nervous about saying toroidal. Uh, a toroid pattern, which is 360 degrees of coverage with a null point coming from above. Thanks, guys. Um, now, if you can think of that toroid pattern, <laughs> right, is in the same plane as the microphone. So rejecting from above, picking up from around it. Right. Now, the 710 is doing something similar, right, perpendicular to the orientation of the microphone. So yeah. a couple of live sound guys that we are, we thought the best way to demonstrate this is in an tape. absolute DIY manner, uh, which is pretty funny considering the amount of complexity we have in the overall <laughs> system right now. So think of that toroidal pattern, right, perpendicular. So the MXA 710, two-foot variation in this case, would have four... Up to four lobes. Bagel shapes, uh, pizza yeah, slices. Calling, I call them pizza slices because when you look at it this way... Right? When you get to this side, you have to kind of forget about the back half. And so you have this from a point to a, a circle sort of coverage that you can then splay one way or the other. So again, not as surgical as, uh, depending on what orientation you're in, but not as surgical as that it's not trying to pick up specific 
pinpointed areas as much as it is, is it's trying to cover a region that you've assigned it. To. Kyle, let's see a better looking picture. There we go. There, there's somebody with a, a, a real eye for uh, aesthetic showing us. This is the MXA 710 under a display. So wall mount horizontal, uh, looks like three lobes deployed uh, for coverage of a eight person ish table. If you're struggling to see it. It's right under the screen there, yes. <clears throat> which is one of the, the two common applications. Kyle, can you toss it back up? The two applications that we're going to see there are they've been sized and, and designed to work very well under or over a screen or on the side of a screen. Uh, we'll see a couple other different examples, but ways that you've not used microphones from sure before. So horizontal, we can also do vertical. Let's see vertical splitting two displays uh, again. So we're swinging that coverage out. Uh, we're covering and we'll talk to Chris in a little bit about distances here. Uh, we can also do, so similar to the 910, a ceiling mount. So a top-down configuration. Uh, again, a little bit more broad, not as surgical as the 910, uh, but still works up in the ceiling. And finally, like the 310, we've got it as a tabletop configuration. Right. Super 310, basically. Super 310. And in case you're wondering, Sure has recently released uh, the accessory kit that's required to put it in the table. So you don't have to invent that solution. There is a, a pre-made kit that you can use to just drop into any table. Now you might be saying, uh, how can I test this in my space? And maybe you're not comfortable with your friendly neighborhood rep coming and walking in the door and doing the normal song and dance. We've got a demo kit, Audio Gears put together. Tim Valley is going to assist us there we go. Thank you, Tim. Uh, so you see the MXA 710. That's the two-foot variation in its horizontal uh, configuration. We've also got the network loudspeaker. Uh, so you've got sound reinforcement coming from the kit. The network mute button, uh, which when you push it, see the lights turn red. We've got mute sync going on. And we've got a button. little Logitech camera in there as well. So you've got a, a single IEC cable to power it and a USB connection to your laptop or PC making your call, and you're done. So we are happy uh, to put this in your hands. Let us know if you want to try the 710 for yourself. Can we go back to Tim for just one sec? Tim, can you just close the lid so they can get some scale on what we'd be shipping them? It's not that big, All right? It's just like a, a regular suitcase. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll ship it to your address. You crack it open, plug in two cables, and you or your customer could be undergoing a MXA 710 demo. Piece of cake. Thanks, Tim. Great. So you know what? Let's start talking to our friends from Sure. And Brandon, you've got a, a fun history with Chris. Uh, you guys know each other from a previous uh, professional relationship. How did that work with you guys? So Chris and I uh, met while I was working at USC as a technical director and uh, teaching some classes there. And Chris was my rep. And I had no idea what a rep was and what a rep does uh, until I started calling Chris for answers. And he would call me back and give them to me. Uh, and somewhere along the line, I kept expecting to get an invoice or something like that. And it never came because as long as I was continuing to participate with the quality products that I was, I was, uh, participating with my side of the rep agreement. Chris went on to move directly for sure, obviously, and, uh, was able to convince me and pluck me out of the university to come and take his spot here at audio gear. So I used to call Chris for all things audio, and I still call Chris for all things audio. How's that working out, Chris? You still like getting Brandon's phone calls at all hours? <laughs> I, I still think that uh, that was probably the best negotiation that could have ever happened. Uh, Alan, you're still paying me monthly to, to, uh, <laughs> to, for that, for that uh, transaction. No, I'm joking. Totally joking. No, I think it's, uh, I think it's great. And to have somebody uh, technical like Brandon on staff at, at a rep firm is really uh, an advantageous thing for anyone because, as he pointed out, uh, this is someone you can rely on for information that he's not going to send you a bill for. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an important piece. We're looking uh, to jump further into the what the spec. What are we missing? Got it. Got it. Perfect. I think the best thing, though, Brandon, was was uh, I know there was a time at USC where you guys were building a new stage that also had a bar, and we got to go taste all the beers yeah. that were coming. Yeah. The, do you remember that? I that do. Was fun. I do. Traditions used to be a wonderful place to go and visit and hang out and do business. And uh, unfortunately, obviously, because of COVID and the university being shut down, all those days are gone for a little while. But hopefully they will return and we can go reminisce and um, 
redo their redo their uh, their bar because I'm sure it needs. Yeah, a it is. It is odd being on that campus and used to seeing thousands of students walking around. The last time I was there, I think I saw two. Yeah. In the entire day, it's crazy. It's pretty sad, uh, but you know, it, it's the safest thing. You know, being an international hub and community center, it's just really important to keep people as spread apart as possible for the time being. Um, you know, I hope universities as a whole across the country find some avenue to, you know, puff back up to life because I think they're an important part of uh, culture. Uh, you know, yep, the, the absolutely. To learn. Thanks, guys. Um, so I'm right over here now. New area. MXA 710 demo going to happen. Uh, but first, Tim, can you talk to us a little bit? You know, we keep seeing uh, Teams certified, Zoom certified. Uh, we're hearing these phrases all the time. We're seeing them on product landing pages. Uh, Microsoft Team Certified, does that mean a bunch of sure engineers had to go sit in a classroom and learn about, you know, Windows and Office 365? You know, what, what does that exactly mean between companies like Sure and Microsoft? Uh, sure is actually not going to uh, learn how to use Windows. We are sending product up to the Teams group at Microsoft, and they are taking our products and certifying them with, uh, with the Teams application, uh, typically through USB connection, but we are doing our best to maybe break that mold as we move forward, and we'll talk about what that software might be down the road. And as far as hardware, Chris, like what's the impact of being certified on sure hardware, Teams software, Zoom, all of these different things? If it is down to that USB connection, why do I see a loudspeaker that's Microsoft Teams certified? Right. Yeah, because frankly, whether it's Zoom or Microsoft Teams, whatever the web uh, platform is, they want to make sure that they have the best results, right? That, that no matter what plugs into their soft codec, it's really providing a certain standard of results. And so when they take our products, it's a pretty rigorous testing that they that all these products go through uh, to make sure they meet the standards, not only from uh, an AEC type of standpoint or noise, noise reduction, but certainly from a fidelity standpoint. Is it is it good, highly intelligible speech and does it complement their software uh, codec appropriately? Right, okay. Chris, before we start listening to some, some different MXA mics, a little more critically, obviously we're listening to them right now, um, we're going to talk about the differences of each mic, but there's something, there's a common thread, steerable coverage. Can you talk to us about what is steerable coverage? How does it impact my, my life using an MXA mic? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and this is a great point, too, because this is a technology that completely differentiates our product from anything else on the market. Um, while all of our products come out of the box ready to use and, and, and they're simple, if you choose, and Brandon kind of alluded to this earlier, steerable coverage technology allows you to be much more precise about where you're picking up sound from, or maybe more specifically where you're not picking up sound. We've all probably experienced what it's like to sit in a, in a call and there's a high noise floor or something going on in the background, whether it's dogs barking or kids crying, which both of those happen in my house all the time. Um, it's, it really allows us to be a little bit more strategic about how we place those uh, pickup zones or lobes in the room. Great. <clears throat> Surgical is the word I like to use a lot because it really kind of impresses upon folks that this is very intentional. It's not, it's not a broad stroke sort of thing. Uh, Tim, moving on to the MXA 310, one of the most common questions that we get is really, you know, how big of a space can I cover with any of these MXA mics? So specifically to the 310, how, what kind of a space do you think we could cover? Well, as guideline with the 310, you'd be looking at around a five foot radius for the microphone. Um, since you and Ross are using it there, people are hearing what that sounds like uh, as a close mic. But uh, depending on the acoustic space, we usually say that this is about a five foot radius as a table microphone uh, that you can get. And that will somewhat differ on acoustics. And you can stretch that depending on your, your comfort level of what you're trying to get out of the microphone. Excellent. So just to uh, hit it home for a moment. Ross and I are sitting in front of an MXA 310 that's using 
two of the four available lobes, and we've steered two cardioid microphones, one towards Ross's position and one towards me, and I'm a little more than an arm length and a half away from the microphone. So hopefully you're, you're hearing good audio and you're experiencing what somebody might experience on the far side of a conference call. Now, Chris, I, I think we all intuitively sort of know what a tabletop microphone is, is capable of, and, and that 310 is, is stretching our expectations there. Uh, but the 710, I mean, this is brand new for us. Um, can we talk about best practice, uh, what you've seen in the field already, two foot 710, four foot 710? Absolutely, yeah. So the two foot version uh, has 50 microphone elements and can create up to four different lobes for coverage in a space. Whereas the four foot version has 100 microphone elements, up to eight lobes can be used. Um, perhaps one of the um, biggest defining uh, differences between the two is that with that four foot version, it's literally twice as long as the two foot version. That in physics equates to about a roughly another octave lower in uh, coverage uh, control pattern. So we're getting down into the 600, 500 hertz ish range for even better control. And, and really, uh, you know, I can't stress this enough. If you have acoustically challenged spaces, um, remember the 710 is not a replacement for the 910. Uh, you're probably going to require more 710s to do a, a similar acoustic sound as a 910, first of all. Secondly, um, use that four-foot version to get more pattern control into lower frequencies. Uh, that's kind of the first thing between the two. However, gosh, the 710 is like, so versatile, right? Where the 910 kind of like goes where it goes, the 310 needs to go where it goes, which is on a table and a ceiling for the 910. The 710 can go in any of those spots. So it can be a boundary mic on a table. It can be a boundary mic on a wall horizontally or vertically as Ross had talked about earlier. Um, it, it can go on a ceiling. And if it goes on a ceiling, it could be boundary uh, mounted as well. By the way, if you're, any microphone uh, that's mounted on a boundary that, that's actually a, uh, uh, a plus. The, there, there's, there's acoustical reasons why mounting to a boundary actually sounds better. But if that ceiling is too tall, we want to drop that 710 down into the space a bit to get closer to the talker because close talker microphones always sound better. Um, right, which is a good point. We should, we should mention, Chris, that you're speaking into our flagship broadcast voiceover, you know, radio mic, the SM7B. That's why you sound so clear and present. Um, so if you, if you want to sound like Chris, we have that too. Everybody around your conference table could be, you know, in, in an SM7B and you could be hosting a podcast for every conference meeting. Um, <laughs> of course, uh, getting the microphone away from the users and, and some of the things users tend to do with microphones is not a bad idea either. I like your description yep. of the 710. It's like the D all of the above as opposed <laughs> to table ceiling. So I'm going to try uh, our, our first Gear Talk moving camera uh, host action here. So I'm coming uh, across the four foot 710. Um, and I'm, you know, in very close proximity now. And I'm going to stretch to about, uh, I think we taped this off 12, 15 feet away. You see me back over here by the, uh, by the production guys, Kyle and Kyle make it, making the whole thing happen. Uh, so hopefully you're hearing uh, the difference in my voice at 15 feet, uh, also in my highly reflective open office area. So I've got concrete floors, uh, wood paneling. This is what we would you know, call a, a medium in terms of acoustic quality. Uh, if we were doing this as a dedicated conference space, we might want to address some of these reflective surfaces. Um, but here's so a four foot 710. Yeah, and so Ross, it's it's a great demo here because it, it illustrates uh, not only how acoustics can can have a, a, an effect on things, but <clears throat> when you read our our material on the 710, we say roughly the two foot version is going to cover to about you know 15 ish feet, and the four foot version is going to cover to about 20 feet. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, when you're doing your designs. So, so that's a two foot 710, a four foot 710, and then it's staying with the theme of 15 foot, 20 foot. Tim, when we get to the MXA 910, what are we talking about distances with a 910? Where does that pick up? 
So the 910, again, will depend on your ceiling height and the acoustic space, but certainly we start as a 30 by 30 pattern out of box. So recently we did an update to the out of box, uh, basically setup that you receive with the microphone. I'm sitting under the mic right now, uh, basically about directly, maybe a foot and a half or two offset. Uh, in this acoustic tile ceiling here. So I'll move around, just roll around on my chair here. I'm gonna move back here and talk through uh, my positioning here as I move back to the back of the table. Just to give you an idea, so now I'm roughly about 10 feet uh, diagonal from the microphone at the back of the table. But again, to, to give you a quick idea, I'll stand up and walk over into the corner just to be about as far away as I can in a, in a very nice acoustic space. Alan's done a great job of making a beautiful conference space here. So there is a quick walkthrough of what we might expect. And uh, again, this is, this is our Ferrari. So this is the microphone that will fix all your issues if you have acoustic challenges, uh, either in a single microphone or multiple microphones uh, to make your, your space uh, workable. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Real, real quick, because I heard it happen ever so slightly as you went. Chris, can you quickly just describe for us what autofocus is doing? I know that, you know, clearly we set the mic to be pointed at that chair at the CEO position there at the head of our table. And then as Tim stood up and kind of floated into the corner, I heard just a split moment of it making its adjustment. What, what's happening there? That's, that's a good thing to point out. Um, so autofocus is a, a, a great feature that was added for free. Uh, in just about a year ago, I suppose. And what's happening is, is just like a loudspeaker, for instance, there's very much an on-axis point of a lobe. And, and it frankly is about the best that that thing can sound. So autofocus uh, allows that lobe to move up to one and a half feet in any direction, whether that's when I stand up or when I move side to side, uh, that lobe can only move one and a half feet. It can't jump across the room. Uh, it, it can only move that minimal amount to try to keep you on that most on-axis part of the lobe so that you sound the best as often as possible. Gives you just more flexibility and freedom to sort of move around then. Absolutely. And, and does it always reset back to that initial set point? If there's no audio, will it drift back or will it stay wherever it was last used and drift from there? So it, it, once autofocus is engaged, the lobe will kind of stay where it needs to stay, even after uh, it, it, like the auto mixer switches to a different location. If someone in that lobe begins to speak again and it needs to adjust, it will. Uh, an interesting thing to point out is that um, when you first set up a 910 and you auto position, which is a different feature, when you auto position all of your lobes into place, that X marks the spot kind of thing, that lobe never forgets where home is. It never forgets. Even though we see it moving around, it always remembers where its initial home place is. Great, thank you. So guys, um, we're talking about all the different microphone options. Let's go downstream and talk processors. I've got uh, the P300 processor here. Chris, real quick, lightning round. Uh, how many echo cancellation channels do I get on a P300? AEC channels. We got eight fully processed Dante input AEC channels. Awesome. And, and do I get any auxiliary Dante inputs and outputs? Yeah, there's a two extra auxiliary Dante inputs on that baby, along with some analog inputs. And how about those analog inputs? What do I got on the back panel? You've got two analog uh, balanced inputs, two analog balanced outputs. You've also got, of course, uh, a mobile input output that you can connect to a mobile, mobile device to have audio, bi-directional audio. And finally, the most important part was that USB. So there's USB audio in and out. I love how, you, how he says, of course, even though I do believe we're the only product that actually offers that very cool feature, right? The, the <laughs> cell phone input, I haven't seen that anywhere else. So Tim, I have here in Telemix Room software, sort of, I've got an, an Intel Nook with Intellimix Room on it. So I guess the first lightning round question, uh, what is Intellimix Room, hardware or software? That would be software, Ross. <laughs> uh, and how many echo cancellation channels do I get with Intellimix Room? With Intellimix Room, you have a choice of either eight or 16 channels. So it does scale a little larger than the P300 in the software. And how about analog I.O. for my Intellimix Room software? 
So that's a trick question, but if you have any analog input or output on that Nook or whatever PC you're using, Windows 10, of course, uh, you would be able to utilize that input source or output source. And in Telemix Room, subscription model, uh, what are my terms of subscription I can sign up for with Intellimix Room? Yeah, with IMX Room, you're looking at either a three-year or a five-year term in either that eight or 16-channel configuration. And again, we're talking about AEC channels there, not total channel count when we look at the product line. And Chris, uh, last question here, which one sounds better, P300 or Intellimix Room? Yes. <laughs> I, I, one, one quick thing, Ross, because I don't think we actually um, hit it right on the head, which is that Nook uh, is not just sitting there to drive that piece of software. That Nook is already in the room, which is the main benefit of the IMX room software, is that computer is already there to drive the soft codec for what's taking place. And instead of adding additional hardware to the space, we're simply adding software that can solve the same problem with an existing piece of hardware, which is very enticing to the IT folks of the world that want to manage less IP addresses. And if you've got your Intellimix Room software on your PC, maybe you're using a Dante-enabled MXA array mic, now we've got a Dante-enabled network loudspeaker. Uh, Tim, can you tell us about the MXN5? Sure. So this is the MXN5. Uh, it's about a four inch depth can, so very easy install. Will fit in most ceiling spaces other than maybe, you know, uh, historical buildings in New York. Those might require a, a one inch can. But uh, this is a magnetic grill on the front. It's a tuned speaker. It's a PoE powered loudspeaker and a Dante Flow. So uh, just a, a nice finish to all of our MXA products in our ecosystem. Um, and uh, just very easy to set up and designer. Ah, Tim, what a segue. It's like you've been on Gear Talk before. Chris, um, <laughs> can we look at, now that we've got uh, the whole being greater than the sum of the parts, what do I get when I optimize my system? Extremely leading question here uh, in Sure Designer. Can you, can you show us what that looks like? Absolutely. And, you know, when you asked earlier about which, um, you know, which processing sounds better. The reality is, is we, when we built that P300, we made that DSP to be portable and it got pushed to the endpoints like the, the 910 and the 710. And even the speaker has DSP on board. The 310 has some DSP. The, and then of course we made it purely software and turn it into a Telemix room that is branded pointed out, goes right on that in-room existing hardware that's running uh, the soft codec. So here uh, in designer to bring the whole thing together, because by the way, you can use any of our products with any other ecosystem, or excuse me, any other system. So they're Dante products. They're not just exclusive only to sure stuff. However, the ecosystem story becomes uh, real important now. We can open up designer, we can create a location. And in that location, uh, you can see I'm gonna be in live mode here where I have brought in an MXA 910. I've got my Intellimix room that shows up like a, a DSP basically here. And then I've got my loudspeaker. I even have that network mute button here. And I've gone through the process for the sake of time to quickly optimize this thing. Uh, when you click optimize, it reroutes everything as it needs to uh, and configures everything. In fact, there is a little question mark that you may have saw pop up that says, hey, if you wanna know everything that's going on behind the scenes, you can click here and it'll tell you everything. We are literally optimizing the DSP, the microphone, and the loudspeaker here because we know what is connected to it. We know how our microphones work. We know how to process them the best. Uh, and in fact, P300 came about because it was such a struggle to get third-party DSP to operate correctly with these new advanced array microphones. They're not the same old thing as just having little MX mics sitting all over a table. They, they have their own challenges. But now you can see that as quick as is this, what I've done is I've optimized my room. All of my DSP settings have been completely optimized for this hardware. I'm done. Seems if like I choose, I could go in and make minor tweaks now, but literally I could make a call uh, and, and I would be up and running. Right, any tweaks from there would be room specific, right? So we're not suggesting that we know what room you're putting these into and what the room might need for dynamics and EQ, uh, but in terms of getting your hardware aligned, that's really the easy button. 
That's right. That's exactly right. And it seems, and it seems as well, though, Chris, sorry for interrupting there, that you could create, you know, for integrators that are looking for extreme consistency from room to room, it seems that that optimized button might put them in the exact same situation times every room that they press it in. Bingo. And and even further to that point, it's not only a way to get a cookie cutter room when you have dozens of these across a campus or even across the U.S. or across the world up and running quickly. It actually provides a quicker way to get a more similar acoustic signature sound from the smallest rooms to the largest of spaces if you're using the entire Shure ecosystem. Speaking of the smallest room to the largest of spaces, uh, another expert segue here on Gear Talk. Talking Gear. Uh, I believe you've got some application examples. And, and real quick, Chris, just to confirm for people, I can use uh, multiple MXA mics of different form factors. I can use a 710 on the wall to cover my presenter. I can use a 910 to cover my gallery area. Yeah, um, and that actually works quite well because if, you, if you've been designing with like, for instance, an MXA 910 for any amount of time, you know that we've encouraged you, if it's over a conference table, to kind of cheat it towards the uh, projection screen, the projector or the screen, sorry, or the display, so that as people turn their heads away, you still have a more of a direct uh, shot at hearing direct sound. Well, now you can leave that 910 closer to the VIP person that always sits at the other end of the table and then uh, add in like a two foot 710 version up under the display or be beside the display just to help kind of even out that acoustic um, pickup coverage throughout the space. Cool. I, I see uh, some bundles you're alluding to there in the first slide of that, that presentation. Can we, can we move through a couple of examples, small, medium, complex? You bet. Sure. We are introducing bundles um, and these are going to be available uh, for for anyone, obviously, to check out. The, the, the advantage here is that if you're an end user, it makes it much simpler to specify uh, a room. Basically, you can say, hey, I want a 310P room. Oh, what's that? That is a 310, an MXA 310 on the table that we see there. It's being processed in this case by the P300. And there's an MXN 5C loudspeaker. I think it was mentioned earlier, but I'll just mention again, these are sold in singles. You don't have to buy two at a time. Um, or maybe you want to scale this up a little bit and have an MXA 710 here with a, several loudspeakers processed within Telemix room. This is the 714M. Uh, I think Tim's group is going to work on a decoder ring for all this stuff. I was going to say, I, I, I can imagine some Brandon uh, dyslexic, uh, you know, b bundles have their convenience. And man, yeah. there's a little risk involved. I too. need one of those 417Ps, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, then moving on up even higher, you know, if we've got, we want to use a 910, a couple loudspeakers, again, P300 here, maybe. Uh, this is a 910P or even a 910X where we're using Intellimic, excuse me, in this case, we have two 910s. I need my Dakota Green. Uh, two 910s, cup, uh, four loudspeakers, a P300. Uh, all of these are ready to go. How might you figure out? what how to how to specify these well uh, here chris, is chris we yeah. ask the leading questions here on, on gear talk okay <laughs> would somebody please ask me chris <laughs> I, how do i how do i figure out which uh ecosystem solution is right for me yes uh coming soon on on uh, the website you'll be able to go to our configuration wizard and it's quite simple you just select your size room you select where you see your microphone going ceiling wall or table you would select a color. Uh, all of the MXA microphones, if, you've, uh, if you're not aware, are available in these three different colors, white, aluminum, and black. And then, of course, you would select the, what type of uh, DSP best suits your eco ecosystem bundle. And at that point, then we would uh, spit out an appropriate bundle that would uh, work best for you. Eager system sounds like it'll sell. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's eager to be a part of your, yeah, your so deployment. Yeah. Come, come into an inbox near you. So uh, keep, keep an eye out. I mean, it, it has really been an incredible year uh, for sure in terms of products, hardware, software, updates, um, and really not done yet. No. I mean, we're going we're gonna to take this all the way across the 2020 finish line. Um, thank you, guys. We, we very much appreciate it. Can you stick around and wave goodbye in, uh, in a few minutes? Sounds good. Absolutely. <laughs> awesome. So we've got uh, one thing we want to demonstrate about how to set up. Uh, that is the MicroFlex Complete Wireless System. Um, we chose this because 
Well, we're getting a lot of interest in a socially distanced, sometimes portable, sometimes fixed for a room. Uh, but this is a really a great option when you've got to spread out um, and you need an easy and convenient way to just get a system up and running. Uh, this is the Access Point Transceiver MXCW APT. Brandon's putting the rechargeable battery in his MXC 640 Delegate Station. Oh, I'm sorry. I did it. MXCW 640 Delegate, delegate station. station. You wouldn't believe the note cards of part numbers and product family names just out of camera view. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, full setup. Full setup here. POE, single network cable uh, to the access point. That is going to start broadcasting on SSID 00 by default. It's doing a scan. It's doing coordination. We're turning on a delegate station. By default, it goes and looks for SSID 00. It takes about, you're watching it happen, 20, 30 Our seconds. Uh, <laughs> Tim's is already up and running. Uh, thank you, Tim. Um, and that's it. That, that is, if, if you want an out-of-the-box, charge the battery, plug it in, turn it on, uh, this is your ready-made wireless discussion system. We've been doing tons of these for folks that uh, usually meet in a, in a boardroom somewhere and they're not able to. And the location they meet every week thereafter is changing because they don't have a high school gym of, uh, in their repertoire for their company to be able to. So they're having to constantly change locations and spaces. This has become an extremely useful tool. And even meetings that are done in multi-language, uh, there are ways to send translation channels to these. There are headphone jacks so that people can listen in their language and come back and speak into the mic in, in English or their, or their native tongue back to a translator. There's a, a bunch of ways that we can route audio in and out of the units as long as we do not exceed the maximum number of talkers. So one access point can configure and manage up to 125 delegate stations. And the RF scanning, the sync, all of that is happening behind the scenes. But of those 125 delegate stations, only eight talkers max. So only eight people can be shouting at each other at the same time. Uh, if you need more than eight talkers, well, that's you, a funky you, meeting anyways. You need counseling, not equipment. <laughs> yeah. uh, but so think of a transceiver equals eight talkers. And of course, you can limit that. So if you don't want six or seven or eight people shouting at each other, you want a very nice, calm, orderly, civil, civil discussion. But it's kind of, yeah, yeah. Two, three, very common. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. <laughs> no, you're wrong. No, you're wrong. Politely disagreeing. Uh, we're going we're gonna to show you how to set that up real quick. Um, just want to mention in terms of the RF range, right? So Microflex wireless deck band 1.9, uh, lots of other wireless traditional UHF band uh, 470 to 614, 616. Uh, this is in the 5 gigahertz range, and we're making use of the DFS channels up in that area. But again, the access point is scanning, is coordinating as needed. It is jumping to clean channels. Um, we did this, gosh, at a trade show, which feels like yeah. a very long time ago. Uh, San Diego Convention Center, right on the harbor, right across from the airport, about as hectic of an RF environment as there could be, especially in that DFS channel range. And we were still able to run the system no basically with no user involvement. Yeah, it, it scans and it finds the best channel for itself in real time. So even while this discussion has been going on, it might have changed channels somewhere because of something that's gone by. Uh, but you'll never know. It's completely self-managing. So to see that, this is prove it, let's do it. This, we forgot to say what segment we were in. Um, I've got my Sure web device discovery application open. I'm going to find my MXCW access point. Um, I could double click it, but I've already got it open. Um, and so this is that web browser control GUI. Uh, by default, up in the top right-hand side here, I come in administrator view, which is what you're going to want to just basically set up your meeting for the first time. So here under meeting controls, I see my speak mode, Brandon, is automatic, which to me... It speaks for you. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, put put the, the stock image of yourself on your Zoom meeting and let your hardware <laughs> chime in for you. You're in charge. I think of automatic as I talk and something happens, but that's not what we mean here. That's Vox, yeah. Vox or voice activated, uh, which always sounds like what you want, 
because it has the least user involvement, but it never works exactly the way you want it to. Uh, you have to define a threshold. Uh, and if somebody sits back in their chair or somebody's a quiet talker, it's very difficult to have the perfect threshold for a voice activated system. So automatic in this case means I push the button and it automatically comes on. Push once to talk, push again to turn it off. As opposed to manual mode, which would be I can press the button and identify myself as somebody who wants to talk. You request to speak. And someone has to manually open my microphone. Right. So in some of these larger gatherings where maybe there's a, a mayor speaking and there's six or seven you know, people out there that have a comment, they would go ahead and say, hey, I have a comment. And those are going to go ahead and, and populate a list that the chairman can then see. And the chairman can choose to take them in the order in which they receive. The chairman can cherry pick and say, I've heard way too much from Brandon today. I'm going to listen to Ross or, you know, whatever it is, you're able to have a, a running list of the folks that are participating and you know, who's participating in a couple of ways. The easiest one would be to use uh, the card reader, the NFC card reader, the NFC card reader in the site here so that I can identify who I am, place my vote, hand it to Ross, he can identify who he is, place his vote if we're sharing a unit or something like that. Good point. We do have a dual delegate mode if you got two people sharing one station. Um, real quick, just to round out the speak mode. So we've got automatic, manual, first in, first out, uh, which sort of serves as a hybrid. FIFO. FIFO, yeah. Our, our favorite method of shipping orders as well. Um, so first in, first out, let's say I've limited my system to only two people can talk at any one time. Well, if no one's talking, then the first person presses the button, they're in. Oh, man, you guys got me all in my head. They're, they're, I, I, apparently, I say button incorrectly. He so says butt in. Yeah. Now, now I can't stop thinking about it. Button. <laughs> button. Button. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. So next gear talk. Talking gear. Or I'm going to find something Brandon says incorrectly and get in his head five minutes before airtime. Um, first in, first out. So if, if you've limited to two open talkers and two people are talking, the next person, the third person who tries to talk won't be able to get in until somebody gets out. So in that way, you can have sort of a self-managing, uh, manual. It's a, like a queue line almost like they, it builds up a reservoir of people in the order in which they were received. And as people release or let go, you're able to step the next person in. It's trying to create civil discussion. <laughs> Aren't we all, um, <laughs> Okay, so real quick here, uh, let's look at the wireless section. Again, this is if you want to see um, where the system is operating. You don't have to have a lot of interaction here if you don't want to specifically assign channels. Uh, just want to mention some of the audio ins and outs. So this is where you would see your number of uh, open talkers and who's talking. These are the active microphones, again, up to eight, as opposed to the input channels. I've got a single XLR input. Uh, and I've got 10 Dante inputs. And then I've got similarly on the output side, a single XLR output and 10 Dante outputs. So if you are a self-contained meeting, you're not calling anybody in or out. Everybody in the room is who is making the decisions. You're done. You're done. If you want to introduce a phone call, Teams, Zoom, whatever that might be, we can get back and do Dante channels to and from Intellimix room. We can do Dante channels to and from P300. P300 can come out to some sound reinforcement in our room or Dante to your MXN network loudspeaker. Uh, so lots of flexible ways to get in and out of your MXCW system. Any, uh, any chats out there today, guys? Are we doing good on questions? Awesome. No questions. We must be explaining Fantastic. things spectacularly. Good job, Chris and Tim. Uh, real quick, Brandon mentioned the chairman view. Let's go ahead. So I went out of administrator view. I selected chairman view. Uh, this is where I can monitor my request to speak list. I can see who my active speakers are. I can mute people. Uh, be careful with your chairmans uh, getting a little bit drunk with power. Um, it, it, it can happen. Uh, so that is a nice view just to give a chairman. There's also a display view if you want to publish the request to speak list. Put it up on the board so nobody can say, you know, well, Brandon keeps burying my name in the list. Uh, if you put it up on the wall, it becomes something that you can't hide. We can also do simple voting. So by simple, we mean a chairman can call for a vote on your touchscreen out to every delegate station. You will get an option for yes or no or yes, no abstain. You have a few different uh, voting configurations you can assign. Uh, we can close the vote. 
the vote results will be published to every delegate station and the view mode. So if we need to display that for the public. It's an instant recount situation. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're trying not to get into too many voting jokes because you can restrict users from voting. But generally speaking, we don't like that idea. But you could in this system. Um, but once you are done with a vote, when that information, when you, when you move on from that vote, that information is gone. So there is no log of how pe individuals voted uh, or if it passed 10 to 2 or 6 to 5. Um, if you want a more structured, detailed uh, voting options, that would be in the Microflex Complete, the wired system, sure. which has a 640, which looks exactly like this, except it's got a cable. Um, that is where you get all of your city council, local government type voting procedures. Do we have a quorum? Um, all of those sorts of things. Here, we think of this as a poll, right? right? Let's instead of raising our hands, let's let's put it down. Yes, no, abstain um, down on the delegates. And there's, there's definitely more features coming for the wireless variation. Um, just the hardwired version took priority in the development cycle to make sure that those larger government agencies and water districts and such could have the equipment that they needed. Uh, but I know that many of the features are being planned by Sure to move into the wireless realm. So this will not be 100% full featured as the same as MXC, but pretty darn close uh, when they when they get done. For free. For free. For free. Yeah. Ah. Another, another free upgrade coming out of Sure. That's why you tune into Gear Talk for the slightly educated speculation on future features that are free that may or may not be coming. Mm -hmm. uh, but we heard Chris say they're free, so write that down, everybody, and tell Chris if they're not one day that you're upset. I don't know if we mentioned eight or nine hour uh, battery life. It will tell you as it's being operated. It'll depend on the distance of transmit, all kinds of other things going on. But you always have a USB input on the back of this here. So if you get strapped for an extra long meeting or back-to-back -back meetings, um, you can plug into hard power, and it will both charge and function at the same time, just like your cell phone. Network charging station as well, yep. 10 batteries. You get look, battery health, cycle count over time. Um, lots of metrics you can pull from the batteries and the units while they're in use. Um, well, we're, we're just about out of time. We want to say thank you. Uh, let's say thank you to the production team who refuses, I think, to still put a camera on themselves. Yes. Uh, Kyle and Kyle managing, managing production today. Uh, thank you to Tim for joining us in the Thanks conference room. For all your work, you guys. This was a great session. And uh, to the two Kyles, I'm going to be the other brother, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, Kyle, and other brother, Kyle. Yeah, yeah, we like it. That's uh, like a blues band. Chris, thank you for calling yep. us from the home office. Absolutely. It's always fun to, you know, go back to the kind of the, the home crowd there in L.A. I've, I've enjoyed being with audio gear and going back and working within that territory. And, and now I got some horses and some RF to coordinate in the barn. So <laughs> you, you just can't <laughs> quit us, Chris. You just can't quit audio gear, no matter how many times you try. And, and if you can't quit us and you want to find this or other uh, sessions that we've done, we, we have an official, the graphics department cut out early uh, oh, yesterday. There you go. So we got, we got a manual check out youtube.com. Oh, that's not oh the camera. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Real time live TV, folks. Yeah, uh, that's slash. gear with two E's, youtube.com slash audio gear. Is my slash going the right way? We are holding this thing up, sometimes not even with fit and duct tape. <laughs> uh, we're back in two weeks, still talking about Sure, Sure Motive, MV7, SM7B, little history overview with the official Sure historian, Michael Pedersen. We're very excited great, about. Great information there. Another special guest, maybe some audio gear performances. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have time. Um, we'll, we'll have time. Um, <laughs> thank you. Have a great week, everybody. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Uh, Be fat and merry. Sure. <laughs>